Boston Ballet, New England's first and most prestigious ballet company, is world renowned for its artistic excellence. But the ballet is also deeply involved with its neighbors and fellow Bostonians. Joining me now to describe some of these outreach programs are Zakia Thomas, Director of Education and Community Initiatives, and Yuel Cassell, City Dance Program Manager. Welcome to Neighborhood Network News. Good to see you Thank guys. You so We've seen each other before. Uh, let's start with you, Zaki. I think a lot of people think of the ballet and Nutcracker, and they don't realize all the educational and programs that the ballet does. Absolutely. I think that uh, most individuals think about the artistic excellence, and they think about what the Boston Ballet does on the stage at the Opera House, but don't know or don't necessarily think about the pipeline that allows young people to get to that place. And so with the Department of Education and Community Initiatives, our goal and our primary focus is on connecting the community to dance in a way that makes ballet relevant. Um, the exposure piece is what we major in. And as we focus on the exposure component, we also focus on incremental efforts to really engage community members, not just in what we provide, which is you know, significant ballet training through Boston Ballet School, but also uh, helping them to connect and, and establish their own identity through dance. All right, Yoel, you are taking people who want to experience dance, maybe people with physical challenges. Why don't you describe some of the programs that you're involved with here that perhaps people don't know, that's, that are not entertainment focused, but sure, enrichment sure. focused? Sure, my pleasure. So in terms of city dance and boys in motion, um, our focus is really to find the best them in the shape, not the shape itself. So how they inform movement and how a movement informs them. Um, it's about uh, really finding who they are as people, but using dance to motivate those qualities and to instigate those qualities. And one of your boys in motion, most people think of ballet as a girl's activity, and this encourages males to, to participate, right, and to maybe take away some of the stigma. Mm -hmm. Is that true? As well, the whole thing with boys is just give, creating a safe environment first to allow them to express uh, because the, there is a lot of interest for boys, but they never, the stereotype sometimes tends to go in the way that the boys may not have given the chance and how they're perceived. So this is creating an environment for them to actually express themselves in a way that has no judgment attached. But then when you meet these boys, they're, they're not discouraged by it at all. Oh, that's wonderful. Now. Recently you guys had your annual visit to the Strand and you tell me both the morning performance for public schools and the evening for the community was extremely well received and what, what did they get to see this time? I understand that your adaptive dance program was showcased and received very well. Yes, I think one of the things that we hoped to do and we were able to accomplish was really highlight all facets of the organization as a result of the fact that we're celebrating our 50th anniversary. Oh yes, congratulations. <laughs> and so to that end, we actually incorporated every element of the institution and we included both young adults from the Adaptive Dance Program, which serves children as young as two all the way up to adults in their 20s. Wow. Um, but we also incorporated both uh, the Taking Steps Program, which focuses on middle school girls, both who uh, have the opportunity to engage with the ballet through the public school system, but also in the summer as well. Now, over the years, having watched your presentations at the Strand, I think given people like Tito Jackson who introduced it there, mm -hmm. you really overcome or stomp out any prejudice people have that ballet is kind of a necessarily just a white person's thing or mm -hmm. stuffy and, you know, because the performances are quite yeah. sexy, I find, mm -hmm. you know. Is that, yeah. is that true? You're I trying to dispel is, or open the image of ballet? Absolutely, and I think this is where you know we focus on the connections piece. There are people who to connect to ballet in many, many different ways, whether it's through uh, the curated um, artistic you know, uh, material that they see on the stage, but also through the instructors. We have a very diverse instructor pool. We have um, multi-ethnic, multilingual instructors who are working with us who are part of the Boston Ballet family and as you may know we have former principal dancers like Gina DeMarco uh, and, and other individuals who have also taught for the school and teach for the school who are involved and invested as well. So it's, it's an institution-wide effort to really connect students wherever they may start, whether they've had previous experience or whether they're starting from scratch. Now, you all, what do you find is the schools, the, the, you know, you have certain 
kids in the dance program. Do the schools that you work with really support the kids, you know, and turn out, you know, emotionally, or, or how, how are they received by their peers? Absolutely, absolutely. It takes a team, really, to create an experience. Um, so it's not only from the teacher themselves, it's from our teaching assistant, it's from the teachers that end up taking the students that we have in our program. We have some of our Boys in Motion um, students uh, who are from City Dance program, and some City Dance students go on into Boston Ballet School, and they're equally as invested. Um, actually, we had one teacher who was particularly invested in one of our students and treats the student as wants to mentor or the child. So yes, it, it's really, it's not just one person, it's really not, not only the child themselves having the interest, but it's having all the support to uh, really support their interest in what they do. So uh, I, I'm glad to hear that. Now mm -hmm. Zakia, you, your area is education and community initiatives. So you're not in audience development so much as uh, Boston Ballet enriching the neighborhoods and, and meeting people where they are, is that true? Or, or you, you have, of course, a ton of programs. Yeah, that... I think we actually overlap. Um, it, you know, in, in all honesty, we really focus on uh, really engaging with the community and finding out what appeals to them. You know, what is it that uh, sparks their interest in Boston Ballet? And that oftentimes uh, translates into the, the experience or the commitment of going to the Opera House. And so I think what, what we do requires that we continue to interface with the community so that we can continue to be relevant. And I think in focusing on relevance and really asking the community, what do you want from us? Uh, and asking them to be partners in the effort to educate their children, uh, get them involved as families, I think we build a relationship that does actually enable audience development in ways that I think are often not expected. All right, so we're running out of time. Where do you suggest folks go on the website to, to find out on programs if, if they are really not sure, you know, what if there's a program that their kid could get interested in or if there's any, uh, what, what part of the website or wh what website should they go to? I think they can go to the Boston Ballet's main website and look under community and that actually outlines the current programs that we have as well as things that we have coming up. For example, we have an adaptive dance showcase that will be happening soon and in addition to that we also have uh, some April Vacation Week activities that are coming down the pike as well. All right, that's great. Thank you both and so uh, people can find out more about you and see video of the kids and, and yes. the programs. Thank you very much. Thank you Sakia. so much. Thank you all, it's always a pleasure. And likewise, thank you. That's it for this edition of Neighborhood Network News. We hope you have a great weekend. Please join us again on Monday night.